Hi everyone, thanks for tuning in or watching this live stream after. Today we are going to do something a little bit different. We are going to focus on three poses that you can do every day to build or maintain your strength. Obviously in these times people aren't able to go to a fitness facility like they may be in the habit of doing and they may not have equipment at home that is accessible to them. So I do have a lot of people who are reaching out saying yes it's, it's great, the weather's been wonderful, they can go for a walk, they can go for a run. But what can they do to maintain their strength? So we're going to do three poses today that you could work on every day if you wanted um, to build your strength in a few different ways. So the first one is what is known in yoga as boat pose or navasana. So what you want to do in this one is you can start finding those sitting bones and sometimes you have to do a little wiggle to find them. Get yourself planted and really think about lifting your spine and drawing your shoulders back. You want to try to avoid going into boat in a hunched over pose. And then depending on your level of strength, if you're just starting off, you may find that just leaning back a little bit and holding on to those hamstrings engages your core enough for you today and then maybe a little different on another day. For those of you who are feeling a little bit stronger, there are different phases. So one is that you can lift your legs. Now keeping them in a bent position like this is going to be a little easier, a little you know, shorter lever. What you can do if you want to turn up the volume, lengthen those legs, reach those arms beside you and hold it here. Now, you can hold that boat pose. You can work up, use a timer, start with 30 seconds, move up to a minute. I mean, if you're really wild, you could go beyond a minute. But trust me, I'm going to promise you that when you get to about the one minute mark, that your legs may start to shake, your torso may start to shake a little bit. If it doesn't hurt, it's okay, you can probably maintain it a few more breaths. That is just what happens when we have muscle fatigue. So, number one, boat pose. You'll find that's a strengthener for your core muscles and obviously for your legs. If um, you don't believe me, just try it. Okay, next is forearm plank. So, flipping yourself over for this one, this is a whole front body strengthener. So it's more challenging than you think it's going to be. Now, one important thing is you wanna make sure that your elbows are in the proper alignment. So sometimes people will go into forearm plank, and I'll just turn this way for a moment so you can see me, and they're like this. This is not the proper arm position for forearm plank. And the reason for that is because you want to um, think of those muscles here right below the cervical spine and sort of notice how they feel when you're in a neutral position and then notice what happens when you start to internally rotate your shoulders. You probably feel that shortening of this area over here and we don't want to hold ourselves in forearm plank with the shortening in that area over there. So, to try to solve that, what you want to do is you want to make sure that your elbows are about shoulder distance apart. And you want to keep them shoulder distance apart. Now, sometimes people who know that they have the tendency to splay their elbows out to the side, they'll actually use a strap. And, you know, you could use um, a belt of some type to prevent them from doing this, but just being very mindful of that. And then from there, what you're going to do is spread out those fingers so you get a good amount of surface in contact with the floor. You don't want to jam your elbows into your mat. You want to basically, 
you know, spread out the distribution of weight. Try to get those hands to be active too. Then from there, what you're going to do is you're going to step those legs back. Now I'm purposely starting off like this to show you. You want to try to eliminate the hump. You want to try to come down, not into a wheelbarrow, but into a straight position here. If you haven't noticed, that pose works your entire front body. I'm going to try to find, I posted at one point, a graphic of all of the muscles that work in forearm plane. You'll be shocked. Arms, chest, core, legs, it, it's pretty much all working. So I'm gonna try to find that GIF and I'll post it on the Auburn Yoga and Pilates Center Facebook page as long as I can find it. So you've got your two primarily front body poses, but we can't forget about the back body. We still have to make sure that we are going to strengthen the back body. So for this one, we're going to do some variation of Shalavasana or locust pose. So coming down here, you want to pin your elbows back behind your shoulders. You want to align your thigh bones so that they're parallel to each other. And you want to pull the heads of your shoulders back. Now, if you're just starting off, I would say do upper body and try to build to a point where you don't have to use your hands. Hold here, and again, you decide the increments you want to start with. Maybe you start with 20 seconds. Maybe you build to 30 and 40 and so on from there, building up eventually to, uh, I'd say about a minute and a minute and a half, but I know that there are some real hardcore people that do hold these poses for a couple minutes, so kudos to you if that's you. Now then, again, for the beginners, you can do upper body, and then you can lift both legs for the lower body component. If you're able to, what you want to work up to is taking those hands down by your side, bringing those palms to face your thighs, and lifting head, chest, shoulders, and legs. Now, if you want to turn up the volume a little bit on it, one thing that you can do to make it a little more challenging is to bring your inside thighs together and your big toe mounds together. Keep a space between your heels but inner thighs, big toe mounds together, and lift. So here you can probably feel, if you're trying this out, and please don't be a spectator, please play along, <laughs> is that you are strengthening those muscles in your back body. So no one needs any special equipment to do, do these. Even if you're a beginner, you can start somewhere. Don't feel like you have to get immediately into a forearm plank and hold for a minute. That may not be realistic for you, and that's okay. But with the social distancing, most of us are home a little bit more. Now is the, the perfect time to set a goal for yourself that um, is attainable for you. And hopefully, if you do these every day, or at least do one of them a day, you could switch between the three of them. Ideally, you do all of them, but um, if not, even doing one a day would be fabulous. So um, please let me know if you found this helpful. I do plan on posting another live stream yoga video um, later this afternoon or early this evening, if you want to be on the, the watch for that. Um, and feel free to share that information with any of your friends. You can put notifications on for the Auburn Yoga and Pilates Center Facebook page, and then you'll be notified um, when the live stream starts if you want to join in. Of course, you can watch it on playback. But if you did find that um, these, you know, little tidbits of other things that you can do when you, you don't have the time to do the whole class is helpful, uh, please let me know. 
Thanks for tuning in. I hope that everybody is doing well under the present circumstances. And I'm already finding that I just can't wait to um, get back to all the students at Auburn Yoga and Pilates face to face. I hope that it works out that uh, that happens sooner than we think. So take care. Bye. -bye.